In this presentation, we will reconcile the credit card account. In other words, basically doing a credit card reconciliation in a similar format as we would do a bank reconciliation. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. As always, we're going to be opening up our reports and the report side on the bottom left, that being the balance sheet and the P&L or profit and loss, starting off with that balance sheet in our favorite reports. We're going to be changing the dates up top. I'm going to be changing the dates from January and let's make them to the month end. We're working on 043020, 043020, April 30th, and we're going to, we're going to go ahead and run that report. Then I'm going to duplicate the tab by right clicking on the tab up top and duplicating it. Then I'm going to open up the PNL by going to the tab to the left down to the reports on the bottom. And then we're going to be clicking on within the favorite reports that PNL, that profit and loss, that income statement. Same date range we'll be using up top, that being from January all the way over to 043020, that April 30th, and run that report. Then I'm going to go back up top, right click on the tab up top, and we will duplicate that tab as well. Let's then go back over to the balance sheet, which is on the far right tab. Close up the hamburger so it doesn't bother us or get us hungry. Hold down control, scroll up to that 125. That's going to be the percent we will be working in. We are, of course, scrolling down and focusing in on the credit card account. So here's the credit card account. We entered the bank feeds. And now we have the balance as of the end of April at that 1250 If we look at our credit card statement, then we have the credit card statement as of 4320. We've got the same balance as of the ending balance here, the 1250 So with the credit card statement, just a few things you want to be aware of with the credit card statement. The major date that's going to be on the credit card statement that you will see, unlike the bank statement, will not be the date of the period in like the month end usually it'll be the date that you, the minimum payment is due so just realize that you're not looking for the date that the minimum payment is due when you're kind of reconciling what you're looking for is the payment period what's the end period for the period of payments on, on the credit card statement so that first be aware of because again the first date you'll look at is when the payment is due uh and and, and that's less prominent you know so the credit card's a little bit more confusing when you look at the statement in that regard that's the first thing you want to look at. And then we'll have a similar kind of process of the beginning balance plus the, you know, the payments that we've made and the charges, the new charges, and then uh, the ending balance. Also note that we have to consider how much we're going to pay at this point in time. So we have how much is due, which we can tie into. We can reconcile that amount. Then we have to consider how much we're going to pay. And, and so then we would write a check and we may pay the entire balance off. If you pay the entire balance off, that's the easiest thing to do because it'll, it'll, for bookkeeping purposes not for financial purposes but you know we get because then we can but if there's an outstanding balance then we have to consider you know what the payment amount's going to be uh, on the credit card as well so let's consider those items so first we're going to do the the bank reconciliation now here in our practice problem we started off with 1000 as the beginning balance we hadn't gone through the reconciliation process before we just had that in the beginning balance so we have to think about well what's going to happen now when we do the, the reconciliation process, just like that beginning balance problem we may have when we're thinking about uh, a bank statement, uh, bank reconciliation, normal bank reconciliation. All right, back to our uh, QuickBooks. Let's go to the first tab now. And we're now gonna go hold down control, scroll back down to 100% because we don't want QuickBooks to do anything funny as we do the, like the data input part of the process. We're going to go down to the accounting here, not in the banking section as you might think, but to the accounting section, to the reconciliation part. We're then going to go to the reconciliation tab, which is the second tab up top, and we want to choose the account. Now, it's not going to be the checking account this time. We're going to be reconciling the credit card account. So we'll select the drop down. We're looking for the credit card. You can look for it by type over here. It might be an easier way to kind of scroll through this. And there's the credit card type account. Don't pick up the clearing account. Pick up the credit card account. So we want to pick up the proper credit card account. Now it is picking up in this case, it does see our beginning balance. So note it picked up our beginning balance. If it had not done so, then what we could do is simply check off the beginning balance as part of our activity as we start to check off the items in a similar fashion with the bank, uh, the bank statement. In other words, if it didn't read the beginning balance here, it didn't pick that up for some reason, then and, and we had the beginning balance that we entered into the system in a transaction in some some way then we could just check it off in the system and that'll and that'll reconcile the first 
time we do this process and then from there that point forward it should show up everything should be fine i'm going to close the burger up top and then i'm going to go down and uh, see the ending balance is one two five zero ending balance one two five zero the date of the ending balance is going to be we're in april i think so april 30th and again you're looking this date is not the date that the payments due, which is going to be the prominent date on the credit card statement but the period end that's being covered uh here so so be be careful on that to pick that if you mess it up it's not the end of the world but just note that that's what you're looking for so when otherwise you're going to get kind of confused on on the dates which a little bit more than you would on a bank statement so then we're going to start the reconciliation and you have the same process here with the bank feeds it should be really straightforward once this is going to be set up because once again all the information that we pulled in came from the bank statement so all these items here showing green obviously indicate that we pulled that directly from the bank statement information from the bank or from the credit card institution and they checked it off for us already given the fact that it must have cleared because uh, we got that information from them we have no outstanding items with the bank reconciliation or the bank uh, the checking account here not the checking account the credit card account and that will typically be the case because we don't have that same kind of timing difference as if we're writing a check and it might have to take some time before it clears the bank when we're thinking about the credit card types of transactions. So this should be a fairly straightforward kind of kind of method. The only problem you might have is that beginning balance issue uh, we talked about. And, and if that were the case and you had to check off the beginning balance to reconcile, that might be uh, something like that 1000 if it didn't show up in the beginning balance and you entered it with a journal entry or a transaction into the system then you'd simply check that off here. The beginning balance would be zero. And then you'd have that 1000 included in part of the charges. And then going forward, it should be very easy. Now note, if this is not zero, just like with the bank statements, uh, if one of these were not included, it wouldn't be zero. And, and therefore your reconciliation would go way down. You could force it to reconcile. QuickBooks would then enter a journal entry, but you don't really want to do that. You want to, you want to make that to be zero. So that looks good. Everything's checked off here. And again, just like the bank reconciliation, I could go back and forth and say, here's the 250, here's the 250, here's the 160, here's the 160, right? And I would always go from the statement back over if, if something's not matching up. There's the 120, there's the 95, and there's the 95, and so on. Once this is green, it'll give you a little green icon up top saying this is finished. And let's go ahead and finish it. So I'm going to say finish now, please. Success, uh, you, you reconciled your account. How do you want to pay your bill? So now it's saying, hey, you, you did it. Do you, do you want to pay the bill? You owe money right now. How are you going to pay the credit card bill? And you might pay the full amount or some portion of it. Uh, the balance due for this account is 1250 If you want, you can pay all or a portion with a bill or or enter, or enter a bill to pay later. I'm sorry, it says you can pay all or a portion of the bill now or you can enter or pay the bill later. Now, if you if you choose the payment now option, then you're going to get a, a, an item to basically pay the bill, which would be an expense or check type form. And if you choose the bill item, let's just take a look at the bill just so you can take see what that would look like. It's going to populate a bill for you here. You'd have to add the vendor and then you and then it would have the full amount of, of the amount that is owed. What that would do is just like when we look, this is the QuickBooks desktop, we would be basically entering a bill, which would increase the accounts payable. And it, and it would, uh, the other side would be going to the credit card, uh, taking the credit card register down to zero. So you could do that and then sort when you want to pay the bill, then you would write a check or have some, or do a transfer of some kind and pay the bill here. But note that if you do it that way, then you're kind of adding an, an accrual kind of system here. So if you're using bank feeds on both sides of the transaction, then uh, I'm gonna close this back out. I'm not gonna record the bill. Uh, and I'm just going to say, view the report. So here's gonna be our reconciliation report. If I go back to the balance sheet, then you'll note now that in the in the credit card statement down here if i go to the credit card we have the full balance that that is still there we just basically reconciled the credit card there's the 1250. now if we're using bank feeds then when we make the payment it's going to be coming out of the checking account and we're going to record it in as it comes out of the checking account automatically so if you're using bank feeds on mo on both sides what you want to do is do an electronic transfer or possibly call in 
or d use an online payment. And then the, the payment will process through the bank feeds. And then like, just like we did in the prior section, the bank feed would then show up and you, and you, and you would then tie it out to that credit card clearing account. So in other words, when you make the payment, you can pay it online. You pay the credit card payment online and maybe you don't even record it into the system, right? Cause you're completely dependent on the bank feeds. It'll then process through the bank and show up when you, when you have the bank feed, right? Or you can enter it into the system here. So for example, I'm going to go to the first tab. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to duplicate it so we can see that statement Then I'm going to go back to the left. And if we were to, to say, write a check, or, or uh, record the, the transaction at this point in time, I could go up top and say, we want a new transaction. And let's say we want to enter an expense. Let's say I, I recorded it in, uh, I paid this online with the credit card company, but I don't want to wait till it clears. I want to record it now in case there's a problem uh, that, that I can at least see that it's in my system. So I'm going to say add, I'm going to say it's going to be for other reasons. So I'm going to pick other reasons. And then I'm going to be paying off American, uh, American, uh, express. I'm going to make this as of Oh four, or let's make it, let's say we're Oh five, uh, Oh five two zero. And it's going to be coming out of the checking account and the other category I'm going to put not to the credit card liability, but to the clearing account. I'm going to put it to that credit card clearing account. So here we have the credit card clearing account and the amount of the payment. Let's say we owe uh, 1,250. Let's say we pay 500 of it. So I'm going to pay 500 of it. So this is going to decrease the checking account. The other side is going to be a uh, decrease or going into that clearing account. So I'm going to say save and close. And then let's go back to our balance sheet. Let's refresh the balance sheet going to close up the hamburger, hold down control, scroll back up to that uh, one, two, five zone, going to go down. Now, obviously the, the bank account then would be going down and then the other side would be going to this clearing account. So now we've got the credit card here and then we have the credit card clearing account. Now we wrote the check after basically the statement date after 430. So if I go into this clearing account, let's check it out, check out the clearing account. I'm going to change the ending date to 123120. Do that again, 123120, run that report. And, and here we had, you'll recall this happened at the beginning balance where we had the, the credit card showing the payment that we made and then the expense. Now note the expense really shouldn't be here after the, the expense would have happened sometime before April, but I didn't want to mess up the data you know, before April because we entered the, you know, we've been entering the transaction. So we put it out here uh, in, in uh, June. And then, and then in this case, now we have the 500 that we made. We wrote a check. We made the payment of 500 uh, there, and we haven't yet seen it clear on the credit card statement because the credit card statement hasn't reflected. So next time we would expect, just like that 250, we, we would expect then the beginning balance to be 1,250, then our payment to then be reflected of the 500, and then the new charges that would be applied uh, when that happens. So in the next statement, then the next credit card statement, we would have our, our amount th that we paid reflected in it. And we would record that on the credit card detail that would come into the bank feeds and the other side go into this clearing account, which would zero it back out to zero. So the point is after the bank feeds have processed through, uh, and we see, we see the payment that would go through on the, on the credit card statement side, see it reflected there and see it reflected on the bank statements, this amount should then go back down to zero. Now let's jump back over to the reconciliation. So I'm back in, in the first tab or the second tab, just so we can see that reconciliation report. So the first one is the summary. We have the thousand. This is just gonna reflect our report here. 1000 beginning balance. We had the 500 uh, charges. So the 500 charges here. And then we had the 250 of the payment bringing us to the 1,250. So there's 250 payments to the 1,250. And then we have the reg register balance as of 430. This is what's reflected on uh, in, in our system in QuickBooks and those two tying out. So then we have the clear transactions for 430 uh, and the unclear transactions after uh, 430. So this is going to be information you know, after the, the reconciliation point, which again, isn't, 
entirely useful because that's going to be information that we input uh, after the point in time that we reconciled here. So that's that's items that were input in um, May, which you can see down here. So then we have the detail of our report down below as well.